everybody. This is Diana from So Very Crafty, and it's almost back to school time. And with back to school time comes pencil case time. And I have created this little three ring binder pencil case that anybody with beginner sewing skills can make in no time. It is super simple to make. I will show you how to add the zipper, add the grommets, and you will be on your way to making loads of these for your family and friends for this back to school season. So I hope that you enjoy this project today. Uh, if you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for notifications, and head over to the website at www.soberrycrafty.com for more sewing and crafting tutorials that you don't see here on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, let's get started on how to make this particular cute little, little three ring binder pencil case. So what are we gonna need for this project? We are going to need some outer fabric, some lining fabric, a, anything longer than a 12 inch zipper, and three grommets. And grommets come in two pieces. There's a, like a gasket piece and the actual grommet piece. And our fabrics are going to measure 10 and 3 quarter inch wide by 7 and a half inches long. That's, you're going to need an outer piece and a lining piece. And I'll put these measurements in the description section of the video. One that's 10 and 3 quarter inch by 6 inch outer and lining and one that is 10 and 3 quarter inch by one and a half inch outer and lining. And then just any zipper that's longer than 12, 12 inches. It, it doesn't matter because it's going to get cut off. So I used in the prototype bag, I used a continuous zipper. Uh, so you can just use any zipper that's longer than 12 inches and that's fine. And so what we're going to do is we are going to start out by adding our zipper to our six inch by 10 and three quarter inch piece. And we're just gonna place this right sides up on our workstation. And we're gonna place our zipper right sides down on our workstation so that our raw edges are matching. And then we're gonna take the lining piece that's corresponding with that and we're gonna place it right sides down so that we make a zipper sandwich. We're going to pin or clip this together and it doesn't matter what you do um, for an experienced sewist you won't even have to do that because this is quite small and you're going to use a zipper foot and just stitch right across this zipper through all the layers and then you're going to flip it right sides out and top stitch along the teeth so that we have a nice finished edge. So we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're going to take care of that and then we'll be right back. Here we are at the sewing machine and when you do this uh, stitching on the zipper, I recommend that you use a zipper foot. I, however, have a quarter inch foot on my machine, and I'm just going to use that uh, for this process. It'll work just as well uh, for me, but for you, I would recommend using a zipper foot. 
So we're just going to stitch this zipper right on, making sure to remove those pins as we go. Now we've come up to the pin and to the zipper pull. We're going to want to reach inside and pull that zipper pull so it's out of the way. And if we have to lift up our presser foot to do that, we will. But we don't want any bumps in our stitching. As you can see, we have our zipper stitched to our outer piece and to our lining piece. What we need to do now is to top stitch our zipper so that the lining and the zipper uh, and the outer fabric are nice and neat. Now I'm going to press my fabrics a little bit so that they are nice and neat along the stitched edge so that we can um, have a nice finished edge on our project. And you can see where I have pulled the zipper pull out of the way when I was stitching. So let me just go over here and do this. Now I have pressed along my stitched line and now I'm just going to top stitch. Now you can see that there is a nice top stitched edge to our zipper. Now let's go over to the workstation and add the other side of this zipper so we can continue on with our project. Now that we've done that, and you will notice that on this part of the video I'm using one zipper and on the other part of the video I'm using the other zipper, that's because my video didn't record and so I'm re-recording this part of the video. Um, so don't be concerned about that. So the next thing that we do on this is we're going to take our smaller piece and we're gonna place it right sides up on our workstation. We're gonna place our zipper right sides down, place our lining right sides down. Again, we're going to either pin or clip it, and we're going to go back over to the sewing machine, and we are going to stitch it together. Okay, so now that we have the zipper on, we need to add the rest of our pieces. And we are going to actually end up ripping out some of our stitches in our lining piece. So we can just take a seam ripper and just rip out some of the stitches. We don't need to rip out very much because we're just using a quarter inch seam allowance. This is an important step for this project because otherwise your lining isn't going to work very well with your uh, pencil case. Now, we're gonna take our outer piece 
and we are going to place it right sides together with the outer piece and the zipper for our project here. And then we are going to stitch across the zipper all the way around, but not the lining, only the outer portion of the fabric. The other thing that's important because you're using a longer zipper is you want to make sure that your zipper pull is in the middle. So we're going to take our zipper pull and we're just going to put it in the middle just like that. And again, you can pin or clip these pieces together. And I'm just going to pin uh, so that my zipper pieces are close together. And again, you're just going to stitch all the way around on the outer fabric only. Okay, so here we are back at the sewing machine, and I have taken some of the stitching out of the lining part of the zipper. And I'm going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance just to stitch the outer fabric. And I wanna make sure that I'm avoiding this lining. these pins as I go. And we have our right sides stitched. Now before we go on I'm going to unzip this zipper. Because if we don't unzip the zipper when we do our next step we are going to be in big trouble. We will not be able to turn this right sides out. So let's head over to our workstation and move on to our next step. Okay, so now we do exactly the same thing with our lining piece. We place it right sides together 
and then we stitch all the way around only using the line only the lining piece and not the outer piece don't worry about stitching over the zipper you've already unstitched the the portion that you need so let's go over to the sewing machine and stitch that here we are back at the sewing machine and I'm just going to start actually at the bottom where I intend on leaving my opening. And I'm going to back stitch a little bit here. going to stop there, back stitch a little bit, and leave our opening for turning. So let's go back over to the uh, workstation. Let's turn this right sides out and move on to our next step. So here we are back at the workstation and we are going to turn this right sides out through our opening in the zipper and our opening in the lining. And you can see that we have the makings of our pencil case, but we need for it to fit onto our binder. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take out this lining and we're gonna stitch it closed. And we can just use our machine for that because this is going to be not be seen. Uh, you can use ladder stitch if you like, but just fold these under the seam allowance, stitch it closed, and make sure you don't catch the uh, outer fabric when you do this. and uh, we'll move on to our next step. I'm not gonna show this on the video, I'm just gonna run a stitch right across there. Okay, so I have gone ahead and pressed this, and now we need to add our grommets so that it fits in our binder. So I'm going to take a, a ruler, and I'm just gonna use my cutting mat here because that's the easiest thing to do. And I'm gonna measure up one and a half inches. I'm gonna take some Taylor's chalk. Uh, you can use a heat erasable pen if you like, but I'm, I have this Taylor's chalk handy from another project. So I'm going to use that and I'm gonna draw a line right across here. 
Now, um, once we've done this, we are going to stitch a line right across here through all the layers. So we want to make sure that that lining is snug in there so that when we add our grommets, we're not going to have a problem. So I'm just going to run over to the sewing machine real quick and I'm going to stitch a straight line right across that chalk line that I just made. Okay, so now we have our grommet casing and now we need to place our grommets. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to measure one inch down I'm just going to put a dot there so I know where that is. And one inch across. And that's pretty close, but not quite. So that's where I want my first grommet. And then we're going to measure four and a half inches from my first grommet to my second grommet and making sure that it's one inch from the top. So we're just gonna put a dot right there with our Taylor's chalk. And from there, we are going to measure, again, one inch down and one inch from the end. So we can just eyeball this with our ruler and put another mark right there. And now the fun comes, and that is we need to put on our grommets. I have this board, and I am going to insert, this is a grommet hole maker that came with my grommet press and I am just going to insert it right here and pound on it with a hammer. Like that. And I'm gonna do that for all four, uh, or all three of my grommets. Now this grommet hole maker doesn't really work that well, but it does give me a circle. So I'm going to cut through all of my layers of fabric with some sharp scissors to create that hole. for my grommet to go into. And there's one hole. And you can see that the grommet maker does make a dent in this, but we do have multiple layers of fabric here, so it doesn't work terrifically well. but these little uh, pointy scissors work great for this job. And we're just gonna go around our little circle that the grommet maker made for us, or the grommet hole maker made for us. And make sure all the layers are cut out and we have another hole and then finally we have the third hole for our binder
now we have our grommets. And the way we put in our grommets is we have a grommet press. And the grommet press makes things a whole lot easier than the hammering grommet press, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... We're going to place our grommet through the hole on the right side and we're going to place it down on the grommet set. Then we have our eyelet and it's got a concave side and a convex side. And the convex side is the side that's rounded. So we want to make sure that our rounded side is facing up. And then we just take our grommet press and we press. And we'll hear the grommet crinkle underneath our our little uh, gasket and we have our grommet on there right sides up and we do that for all three of our grommets so let me take care of that and then we'll put it in a binder and see if it works Okay, so I have all of my grommets in my pencil case. My zipper works perfectly and I have room for my pencils. So let's get a binder and see if this is gonna fit. So here's a binder, it's gigantic, but the holes are still the same. All we have to do is slide these in To our slots and there you have it a nice little binder pencil case works perfect every time so I hope you enjoyed this project today and if you did give me a thumbs up Subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for notifications so that you have uh, more sewing and crafting tutorials in your inbox whenever they come out, and um, head over to the website at www.soverycrafty.com for more sewing and crafting tutorials that you do not get here on the YouTube channel, and head over to my new website if you like Cricut crafting, uh, called paperdaisy.com and uh, get some Cricut crafting going for yourself. It is a fun little website. It's brand new and I encourage everybody to head over there and take a look. So that's all there is for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed this project and uh, hopefully I will see you again next time for the next project, whether it's back to school or the holidays or right around the corner. So maybe we'll be doing some holiday projects. So that's it for today and I will see you next time. Bye.